if you will, you go to Matthew, Matthew 28. If you can go to Matthew 28. Open your Bible to Matthew 28. Twenty eight verse uh, nineteen through twenty. Before his ascension um, back to heaven, Jesus gave a commission to the church or to his disciple, and he told them in verse nineteen, "Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I command you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end." Of age. So here we see the church mission. The church mission is twofold. The church mission is to uh, 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 evangelize, and then once new convert from all the nation come to faith in Jesus Christ, then the church is to teach those new convert to be obedient to the principles of the Word of God, to be obedient, and that's discipleship. And so obedient is how we live as a disciple. See, not all Christians are disciples, and not all disciples are Christians. In other words, many men have had disciples. But in order to be a disciple of Jesus, one, you had to be a believer in Jesus Christ. And then two, uh, you have to obey um, his word. And so not all believers are always walking in obedience. Now, we're striving to live as a disciple through our obedience, but... The point I wanted to make here is that baptism, which uh, is an English translation and is from the Greek word ba uh, uh, baptisma. Well, in, class in, in classical Greek, it was baptisma, uh, and it was used to indicate identification, kind of like a, a wedding ring. A, re a wedding ring identifies the spouse with each other. So it indicates identification of one object with another. So you who are being baptized, what you're doing in this baptism is you're identifying yourself with Jesus Christ. And now the word, you see the word uh, in different forms throughout the Bible. You see it in the form of bap baptizo, bapto, baptismos. Uh, and it would simply just uh, mean uh, dipping or immersion for the person uh, for the purpose of identifying uh, 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 with the symbolic liquid. So in other words, that water is symbolic to something. And for us as the church, the water is a uh, 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 is symbolic to the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's symbolic to the baptism of the Holy Spirit. and, and, and the, but the baptism of the Holy Spirit happens, the moment a person believes in Jesus Christ and not the moment that they go down in the water. So the moment we believe we, we believe in Jesus, we are being identified with Christ his, his uh, death resurrection. We're being placed in union with Christ and therefore being identified with him. Now there was seven uh, baptism um, throughout the uh, uh, Bible but there was only two distinct categories of baptism. One, there was a ritual uh, baptism, uh, which used immersion in water to illustrate a higher and greater principle. Two, you had real baptism, which is actual, a literal identification of one object with another. See, ritual baptism was performed by John, John the Baptist. John the Baptist ministered to the Jew during the time that Christ was on earth. And as he heard the king, he was a herald of the king. He announced the presence of the Messiah, which at that time was still at hand. The kingdom was still at hand. And John said, hey, the kingdom of God is at hand. Here's the Messiah. The Messiah is coming. And he baptized them, actually preparing the people for the Messiah and entering into the kingdom that he came um, to bring. Now, immersion in water identified believers with the kingdom that Jesus came to bring. It would demonstrate their faith, uh, which at that time was still that the kingdom was still at hand. But as we as you all know, you Bible scholars know, the kingdom that Jesus promised 
been postponed because they rejected their Messiah. The majority of them rejected their Messiah, and that kingdom would not come until after the, after the seven-year tribulation period. But what is the significance of John's baptism? Well, those who expressed faith in the Messiah were forever saved and identified with his eternal kingdom. So John's baptism ended, though, with the death of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And then Jesus was baptized. And in other words, when Jesus got baptized, his baptism uh, identified him and his humanity with God's plan to save sinners. And it represented Christ's willingness to go to the cross and be judged for the sin of the human race. He was being baptized in the same water that all these sinners were being baptized in, identifying himself with the mission that he came to accomplish. So when Jesus went into the water, he was making a public declaration that he would remain sinless, though men are sinners, and there's still some of the residue of their sin in the water, but Jesus remained sinless, uh, uh, no matter the testing, no matter his suffering, he remained sinless to die as the perfect sacrifice for sinners. So his emergence, when he came up from the water, it illustrated uh, his resurrection. It illustrated his ascension back to heaven. It illustrated that he is now seated, at the, that he will be seated at the right hand of God the Father. And then after he ba got baptized, the Father uh, 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 spoke from heaven and said, in Matthew 3, 17, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. So the father said, hey, I approve my son's sacrifice for the sins of the world. Way before it even actually became a reality, the father was approving or confirming his approval by announcing from heaven, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And then after Christ was sent back to, after he went back to heaven, and, and, and resume uh, um, his ministry before he became a man. He sent the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2 and began a new age. So a new age came in Acts chapter 2 and it's called the church age. And so speaking of the church age, so the church age is the age that we're living in from Pentecost until Christ wrapped to the church. We're living in the church age. Now, how does ritual baptism is real, how, what, what does it mean for the church age? Well, the water baptism of the church age is a uh, uh, visually illustrate the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It illustrates the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which occurs at salvation. So salvation don't occur when a person is baptized. Salvation occurs before baptism. So if you have believed in Jesus Christ, whenever that was, you were baptized. So now you're just publicly proclaiming and identify yourself with what you have already believed. So immersion in water illustrate the believer identification with Christ, death and burial. You can read that in, in Romans chapter 6, verse 3 through 4. And rising from the water illustrate the believer identifying with Christ, resurrection, ascension, and secession. In other words, it was used to illustrate or to teach. So in other words, these kids and this mother <laughs> are actually allowing us the opportunity to be used by God to illustrate a spiritual transformation that occurs the moment a person believes in Jesus Christ. Transform Transformation don't start there. Transformation start way before you even get to the water. Transformation start the moment a person believes in Jesus Christ. It may not always look like it in your practice, but a transformation took place because it's the work of the Holy Spirit. So the moment the person believed, a transformation took place. The Holy Spirit creates a new nature in the believer, placed the believer in Christ, in union with Christ. And that is what the, the ritual uh, is proclaiming. So the baptism ritual remains legitimate testimony to the believer's faith in Jesus, but water baptism is not a prerequisite 
a requirement for salvation. Apart from understanding that, the doctrine behind the ritual, guess what? Water baptisms in the church age have no significance. So in other words, someone don't understand and get that, if you go down in that water, you just come up with just wet center. <laughs> Real baptism is performed by the Holy Spirit the moment a person believes in Jesus Christ. And so uh, uh, what we're doing now is we're identifying with the invisible but real identification that occurred the moment a person believed in Christ. When God, the Holy Spirit, entered the believer into eternal union. Here's the deal. Once you're in union with Christ, you cannot be taken out of that union. Here's another uh, uh, a blessing. Once you become a believer, you now is over the angels. Why? Because now you're seated in heavenly places in Christ who is above all angels. Wow, what a promotion. <laughs> what a promote angel would create a greater than us, but now in Christ, we're actually greater than angels. Some of us are going to be judging angels. But anyway, so that is, uh, uh, I want to close with Romans 6. Go to Romans 6 and then we'll, we'll go. Just Romans 6, just a couple of verses, and then we will go ahead and take a break, give them time to change if they have to change. Romans 6. Romans 6, verse 1. Romans 6, verse 1 um, through 7. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin so that grace may increase? May it never be. How shall we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ, this is not, bap this is not ritual baptism. This is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. For we all have been baptized into one body. That's the baptism of the Spirit. We have been baptized into Christ. Jesus have been baptized into his death. Therefore, we have been buried with him through baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father. The glory of the Father is a reference to the Holy Spirit participation in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And every believer have the same power that resurrected Jesus from the grave living within them. You didn't know that, did you? You didn't know that you're walking around with power inside of you. The power that resurrects Jesus from the dead lives in every believer. That is the only reason we're able to do anything that is good is because we have resurrection power living within us. And then in verse uh, five, for if we have become united with him in the likeness of his death, certain we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. See, Christ's resurrection was glorious, and therefore, as believers, because we have the end of the Spirit, our lifestyle should reflect the glory of God. But that is progressively. All right, at this time, we're going to uh, stop here, and we're going to uh, take a five-minute break. And uh, if y'all if can change, and we'll meet everybody outside. Yeah, probably. We probably should. Once everybody get out of here.